we are the Borg. Resistance is futile. That is a play off of Star Trek, which has been this part of my life probably since I can early remember. Not exactly sure why I fall in love with it, because I'm the only one in my family that does. But the Borg is the arch nemesis within the Star Trek universe. And there are a few cases where the Starfleet officers got their leg up on them and defeated them. But for the most part, the Borg typically always win because resistance is futile. They are the superior race. And that is their philosophy. And today we're talking about resistance. Because resistance shows up in our life in a lot of different ways, often ways that we're not really honest with. Like this morning, the bus was almost 25 minutes late because of some snow that came through the night before. Kids were getting angsty. They weren't on me to drive them to school. We're all out patiently just kind of waiting. It wasn't that bad because the kids could play in the snow, but they were getting worried because if I was going to start ringing at school and they were still not on the yet in the bus, they were asking me to take them into school. And yesterday on Facebook, I asked the question, what is life trying to teach you? that you might be resisting its lessons. Now, if you've been a longtime listener to this podcast, you know that I'm a big believer that life is happening for us, not to us. It's often difficult, even as I look through things in my life, different things that I'm resisting, how are those things showing up in my life? And how am I letting go of my ability to control them and just accept what life is trying to teach me? Because life isn't necessarily vindictive, but it can feel vindictive. And often the reason why it can feel that way is because we're resisting the change. We're resisting what's in front of us. We're resisting something we need to accept and acknowledge, maybe a truth, a feeling, a belief. A lot of times it's those things that we're not paying attention to. Also on BenColoy.com, I dropped a blog article that was dropped a parable of a man looking for his wallet under the streetlight and a policeman comes up to him and says, hey, are you sure your wallet's here? And he's like, no, I last seen it in the park. And the policeman's like, well, why aren't you looking in the park? He's like, well, the light's here and it's easier. That right there hit home to a core process of what I believe most men get wrong. And is that we were looking to live and to find everything that's wrong with us or what we feel is wrong with us or that we need to change in the light. It's not in the light. Your answers that you look for are not in the light. Because if that were the case, your ego would allow you to pe other people to see them. But your ego, in the description I use to tie it to light and darkness, your ego is actually wiring your brain to keep things that are in the darkness in the darkness. It's rotating those lights, those street lights, metaphorically, as you're having a conversation to make sure no one can see what's in those shadows, to make sure no one can find what's over there. And often, the one reason why people hire coaches and why coaching can be so effective is because the coach goes along with you with a flashlight. And it's not necessarily like you're scared of the darkness, but it's someone else looking for something that you often don't even know. You might have gone into the darkness before, walked by that tree a thousand times, but a coach has a flashlight and can see something different about that tree that maybe you can't. Or you've always just accepted that's how that's always looked, and someone else needs to look into that moment, that memory, whatever it might be, and see what they what you can't see in your own life. So circling back, what is going on in your life this week that life is trying to teach you a lesson that you've probably been here before? You've tried learning this lesson before, but you still struggle. You're still struggling to move through it. You're still struggling to break the loop because oftentimes when we're resisting these things and when these lessons keep coming back, it can often feel like a roundabout from hell that we enter this roundabout, we follow the signs to get out of the roundabout, but we keep taking the signs we're supposed to, but somehow we always end up back where we started and we can't figure out why. Well, oftentimes it's that darkness. It's the darkness that has the pieces of the puzzle that you are not looking for. So to wrap all this up, ask yourself the simple question, what is life trying to teach me this week? Maybe it's already happened and you need to look at it and see like, what is it about that lesson that I need to articulate and understand? And what can I do to move through it? And if you've already got a good answer for this one, take it to the next level. The higher level question is, if my life was a book, what would be the thesis? What would be the big lesson that life was trying to teach me over the 30, 35, 40, 50 years, however long you've been alive, what's the thesis of that book? What was life trying to teach this man his entire life that maybe you struggled to figure it out until the last five years? Or maybe it was last week. 
So wherever it might be, ask yourself, what is life trying to teach you that yet you have yet to really contemplate, integrate, and understand and move past? And I'm back again with you guys tomorrow.